Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. I want to talk today about the various external microphone options you can use if you own the Canon Vixia HFR800 camcorder. Now there have been some topics, uh, some videos on YouTube before about what type of uh, microphone you can use, but I've amassed quite a collection, which I've just bundled right here uh, into a bag. So I can just kind of show somebody who's looking at buying an external microphone. I'm not gonna recommend any of these microphones as in I don't feel strongly about any of them that they're terrific, but just to show that there is actually kind of quite a diversity of microphones you can use. First thing to say is I'm currently using a um, wireless lavalier system. It's uh, the lapel mic is up here, running down into a transmitter, and then the receiver is running um, into the Vixias at 3.5 mil. So that is a uh, you know UHF system operating over, I believe it's called 2.4G. There are tons and tons of these on the market. So again, that's why I'm not recommending uh, specific products i'm just talking about the different types of microphone that you can use and uh, you can tell me what the sound quality is like um i think it's fairly okay i think it's probably quite a bit better than the internal microphone and uh better best of all it gives me the freedom to move back and forward uh without losing audio quality because it's a wireless system now if you don't want to go for um wireless then i'm going to give you a few options here so the key thing to know about when we're talking about the Vixia HF R800, it does have a um, eighth uh, input for 3.5 millimeter microphone. 3.5 mils is an eighth of an inch, so it's also called an eighth. And it also has a 3.5 mil output, which means that you can monitor the audio in real time. Now, something really, really important, two things that are really important to know about using external mics with the Vixia. First thing is that you want to go and change the, um, the levels to manual now by default the camera is going to be using automatic levels and uh, within the menu if you click on the home icon scroll down to m you want to click there and then go into manual now what i found is that each microphone each external microphone kind of requires its slightly different gain setting and that's why monitoring becomes super useful because if you turn up the gain too high you're going to get an audible hit on your external microphone now, uh, it's a real pity to find that out in post-production when you offload your SD card into a video editor. So really the easiest thing to do is buy yourself something like these things, a pair of studio headphones, um, and uh, plug that into the eighth output. And then you'll be able to listen before you actually start recording to see that your levels are accurate. Second thing that's really helpful is to have the level meter turned on. Um, I'm looking at the level meter because the LCD is facing me. And then you can see again, that the levels are good. So that's kind of how you do it. And then I literally just kind of take notes for each microphone. I know that my uh, Canon track shot sounds best at about 14. Um, I think I'm using this particular wireless lab system at 17. So in my experience, each external microphone has a different level and it's just kind of trial and error to figure out what that is. So um, let's talk about some, op some, op some microphone options for the Vixia. So, the 3.5 mil or eighth jack uh, does not supply any power. So there's two types of uh, power that microphone ports uh, typically produce, whether we're talking about 3.5 eighth jacks or XLR jacks. One of them is called uh, plug-in power, PIP, and that's a low voltage DC supply running up to 10 volts. I think it's more typically in the two to four volt territory. So it's a really, really small amount of um, electricity and that power is microphones and you'll typically see microphones like a lot of the road mics they list on their product specs no battery required that is a warning that it's not going to work with the uh, Vixia HF R800 because in order for microphones to operate they need to have uh, power somehow that power is either going to be coming from the port to which they're connected or they're going to have an internal power supply so in terms of microphones that are compatible with the Vixia HF R800 um, you could make a list, but it's easier to just understand the tech specifications. Any microphone which delivers its own power, and that's basically through an internal battery. So this lav mic system I'm wearing, um, it's charged up by uh, you know Type C USB, and therefore it's got a little small lithium battery built in. And as I'm using it, the receiver has a battery, and that is carrying the uh, the the audio signal into the camcorder. Now here's another option if you want to use a wired lav mic. I mean, I have a bunch of these, but just to kind of show a few of these, here is a pretty not so special Mammon system. Uh, but you can see it's got this uh, cylinder here, 
and there's two settings um, off and camera and you want to turn it uh, on to camera uh, if you have a system like this now the reason is that you see how it says off smartphone so that's basically saying that okay it this uh, lavalier system expects that if it's connected to a smartphone the smartphone is going to be putting out a PIP uh, power supply through that 3.5 millimeter jack therefore it doesn't need to uh, give its own power from the battery however that's why the, there is a camera setting and what the camera setting is doing is turning on the internal battery it's one of those small button batteries and um, if I were to plug if I were to hook myself up to this lav mic um, and put the uh, put the 3.5 mil jack into the Vixia I would see nothing on the level meter if it was off and as soon as I turned it on I would start seeing levels uh, because it has to be in that state to work now there's ton and tons of these lavalier uh, uh, wired lav mics 3.5 mil this is a big old one it's about kind of i'd say there's two or three meters so um you know the downfall of a wired system is obviously that there's a wire however um versus wireless systems you're running into less problems with interference particularly given that that 2.5 uh 2.5 band is pretty cluttered nowadays with that uh, wi-fi signals and that so you've got a ton of options for wireless lav for both actually wired and wireless uh, lavalier microphones with this particular camcorder. Um, so this is just one that I have in my kit bag and kind of ready to go for an interview. Now the next thing I want to show in this kind of microphone show and tell, if you will, is what happens if you want to use multiple mics. So the Big CHF R800 only has a, a single 3.5 mil input. So it does not mean that you can't use uh, multiple microphones. Here's kind of a workaround. Here's what's called a passive mixer. This is the Andour uh, WSV2. I picked this up on eBay for about 10 or 20 bucks, something like that. Now what this guy does, it has a cold shoe at the bottom, which is handy for um, if you're using something like a Scorpion grip for accessorizing. And it has a, a two inputs here, left, right, and it's got one 3.5 mil output. And you've got two gain trims on the front and you've got a M and you've, you've got a MS switch, which is going between mono and stereo. Now, let me just explain a few things about this. Outputting mono to stereo. If you're outputting to mono through a device like this, you plug in your boat, you plug in two microphones into left and right. You set the levels of each microphone, each channel on this. Now, if you set the output trim to stereo, each microphone, it, you're going to get, this is going to put a stereo track into the Vixia HF R800 and each microphone is going to be on its own channel. Microphone one on channel left, microphone two on channel right. And that means that in post-production, you're going to be able to actually manipulate. So turn off one microphone by just cutting out or silencing the channel for a portion of the audio and turning on one microphone. So this allows you to bring two external microphones. Now there is a caveat. This is a passive mixer. That means that um, it doesn't have any power in it. It's just literally a piece of plastic with some circuitry inside of it and it passively draws its power from the microphone. So you, the same rules as apply for standard external microphones apply here. In other words, you're gonna need microphones with their own power in order, to, uh, in order for them to work with this. But if you want to connect two microphones, I haven't seen passive mixers with three or four uh, different inputs on the market, although I'm sure if you look hard enough, they exist. There's also active mixers. Here's another accessory in my microphone kit bag that I've played around with a little bit. This is a piece of gear called the Saramonic Smart Rig. Now what this guy has is an XLR input um, on this side. This is the Smart Rig 2. XLR in here, it's got a uh, 3.5 out here and it's got a, a 3.5 out here for monitoring. You've got a gain trim and you've got a switch for 48, power, 48 uh, volt phantom power. I've just turned it on and now you can see the lights are on and now I've just gone off the 48 volt a light's gone off and now I'm going to turn it off so I don't drain the battery. Now this guy works on a 9 volt uh, battery, one of those big chunky batteries. So what you can do here, so you're, you might be thinking, well I can't use an XLR microphone with the Vixia HF R800 R or I can't use a microphone uh, which even if I could use XLR I couldn't use one of Phantom Power. Definitely not true, all you need to do is get yourself one of these guys, plug in your XLR microphone requiring Phantom here, Set the gain here and you can either monitor on this device the smart rig or you can monitor through the camcorder um, and that this so this will allow you once you have this you can connect essentially any external microphone into the Vixia HF R800. Okay I don't want to make this video super long so I'm going to just try uh, rush through the rest of the microphones in my kit bag. 
Here's something called the Saramonic Cam Mic Plus. I've got the dead cat on it. Now this is a uh, Saramonic. Do make a couple of these cam mics. One of them doesn't have phantom power. Uh, sorry, doesn't have its own battery. The other one does, and only the one with the battery does. It's Saramonic Cam Mic Plus. I think it's the Cam Mic that doesn't have the battery. This has a little switch, and there's an internal battery. I think it's something like a triple A battery that goes in here. And um, again, the, the key when you're looking for what external microphone will work with the Vixia is, does it have a battery? That battery can either be a literal, literal uh, cell battery, or it can be a battery that charges up uh, via the mains, uh, which is just a lithium battery that's charging from power. So once it's got a battery, it's got its own power supply, it can deliver power into the camcorder, it's gonna work. If it expects power in some way, you're either gonna need something uh, like this. And by the way, there's another Saramonic smart rig. Um, I think it's the next one up in the series. It has a 3.5 in as well. So that will actually allow you to use everything, including 3.5 mil microphones that need passive, uh, passive power supply. You just run them through this. Um, here's another uh, Boya. This is pretty much the same as the, as the Mammon wire. There are lot, lot, lots of these on the market. I think this one is slightly better. It's got a um, internal uh, button battery and power. Uh, so there's that. Now in terms of wireless systems, as I said at the start of this video, I'm currently wearing one. Here's another one that I have. Um, this is a little bit more versatile. This one has a built-in uh, lavalier, so you can't pull the lav out of the transmitter. You can get uh, these RX, RX TX systems where you've got a, a receiver. This is from uh, Maono as well. And um, I've just kind of put labels on them for uh, to show what, what each of these is. Um, and this will allow you to, these will work because they have a, a power supply um, in them. So when you turn it on, uh, you can see that that's lighting up. So, and this guy takes a charge. Again, th this is your clue. So this would be useful. Um, you can either use these, all of these guys now kind of work as their own um, lapel microphones, or you can plug in an external 3.5 mil uh, microphone there. There might be, there is on the market a, um, wireless system that'll take in uh, XLR and put out 3.5, I believe, uh, but I don't own it. Uh, I don't own it yet. So, okay, that was the uh, that was the Mammon. Um, and there's of course now I've kind of spread my money cheaply and widely. By which I mean I've bought a bunch of uh, relatively inexpensive uh, microphones just to test them all out. Uh, you can find better quality products in all these categories, like the Rode. Uh, wireless systems would be a lot better than that $50 one I'm certain. So here's another thing you can use. Here's just another thing on my gear. This is a uh, wireless UHF system. It's kind of a reporter interviewer mic. It's got a uh, 3.5 out. This is by Bietrun and it's got UHF here. So this guy works as well. Now as I said you're going to need to figure out the levels for each of these or a uh, better, better strategy is just invest in a pair of monitoring headphones. Getting near, getting near to the end, um, here is a uh, relatively inexpensive shotgun microphone. This is actually an AliExpress one, so like this is like a $10 shotgun. It's kind of mini, but it's got its own power supply. That will work. And finally, the last, uh, actually two more microphones to show in my, in my kit bag. This I got because it's a really interesting concept. This is the Comic Attract Shot, and it's got two different uh, shotgun microphones. So one of these can be rotated, to face you. So now you've got one arm, one shotgun arm facing out, one shotgun arm facing back. Um, it requires charge. It's got a little LCD display here. Uh, so clearly this is a microphone that will work. Levels are always finicky, especially when you've got a system like this where you've got levels both on, on board uh, the microphone and then you need to also set them in the Vixia. So that uh, requires a little bit of uh, adjustment to get to the right level. And last but not least, we have a super, super useful tool, the Zoom H1N. This is a field recorder, very, very popular uh, device among filmmakers, but it can actually be used um, as a microphone with the Vixie. And the way you do that is as follows. There is a uh, line out and all you need is a 3.5 mil male to male cable um, in order to patch this audio through to the camcorder. It's also got a line in, so another thing you can do um, is to run a microphone like a lav mic into this, record directly onto this and then sync and post, but you can also simultaneously patch it out to the Vixia HFR800. That's pretty much it. I mean, relative to a, uh, you know, I'm looking at upgrading to a better camcorder with XLR 
uh, etc. So if you have something like that, you've it kind of cuts out a lot of work. You don't need to worry about the the power requirements for each microphone. You don't need to use um, accessories like this to get XLR mics into the camcorder. So it just makes it easier to run and gun and have something that you know is going to work with pretty much everything. But as I hope I've kind of uh, shown in this video, you can still use pretty much um, every type of microphone with the Vixie HF R800 if you just pay attention to the specs. Hope this video was useful. If you'd like to get more videos from me, please subscribe to this YouTube channel.